in. With those new unemployment numbers just released about half an hour ago, unemployment now stands at 7.7% right here in the U.S., the lowest rate since December 2008. We appreciate you joining us. I'm Natalie Baumke. And hi, everyone. I'm Chris Stipes. The government says Superstorm Sandy up in the Northeast only had a minimal effect on these latest figures. The U.S. economy added a solid 146,000 jobs last month in November. Hiring remained steady during Superstorm Sandy and in the face of looming tax increases. But the government says unemployment dropped from 7.9 percent. Again, it's down to 7.7 uh, in October because more people stopped looking for work, they say. Joining me this morning is Congressman Kevin Brady, who is the top Republican on the Joint Economic Committee. So are you buying that? More people stepping away, stopping looking for work, and then that affects the numbers, and then we get this 0.2% drop? It does. We, earlier this morning, we wondered why 146,000 uh, jobs, one, that's good. We always like adding new jobs, but it's about break-even. So why would the unemployment rate fall? We had about 350,000 people stop looking for work. They just dropped out of the workforce. That, that continues to be a troubling part of the economy. Uh, and we've had overall about 100,000 fewer workers overall in the country. That contributes to it. But again, look, I always like adding jobs every month uh, for whatever reason, but we're still struggling in a lot of, a lot of the country. Yeah, so on the surface, you hear a 0.2% drop in a month. It seems encouraging, but you're saying that's not necessarily the case. Well, it's not always the case, unfortunately, because it really has to do with how many people are looking for work. That's how they figure it out. And where we saw uh, some of the new jobs are in retail areas, in healthcare, and in professional business services. So that may reflect, you know, what some economists have been saying saying consumers are getting a little more confident. Maybe their housing values are stabilizing. Maybe their IRAs are stabilizing. So they're starting to, to uh, buy more, consume more, feel a little better about the economy. That may reflect some of those jobs. Two words that we've heard a lot of recently fiscal cliff and the negotiations that really aren't happening right now. Uh, how do the jobs numbers play into that debate as both sides kind of are holding steady and holding strong on what they want? You know, I thought it would have a bigger uh, effect because we did a survey or saw a survey this week that showed that over 70% of businesses aren't hiring because of that uncertainty and 20% are actually laying off workers in anticipation of either higher tax rates or the new health care law, which they're very concerned about, at least here in the Houston region but it apparently didn't have that big effect on the jobs numbers. Uh, the Democrats and the president are steadfast in saying that we need to raise taxes on the wealthiest Americans, the top 2%. Republicans don't want to go that. I mean, the president says he's not going to budge on that. Is there more burden to compromise on Republicans since the election? They chose President Obama to be there. Is it more on the side of the Republicans to say, okay, we need to give up something? Listen, everybody's not going to be happy there, but we're in a major situation financially in this country. How do you... Yeah. Put that in perspective. Great question. Uh, I think it's a shared responsibility. Obviously, this was a status quo election. They re-elected this president, but they also re -elected a uh, re-elected a House that has said higher taxes don't solve the problem. It doesn't solve the deficit. I think it would uh, pay for eight days of federal spending, so a drop in the bucket. And it's bad for the economy. It could cost, in Texas, uh, about 57,000 jobs could be lost raising those taxes. What we said is let's take a third way. Let's raise tax revenue for America to, to tackle the deficit, but do it by getting the economy growing, you know, creating more jobs, more revenue. We think that's the right way to tackle the deficit and, and help people get jobs. How optimistic are you, or pessimistic for that matter, of whether something will get solved by this deadline. We're now 23, 24 days out. We're getting right down to the wire, as we often do, and we continue yeah. you know, to work things out last second. That seems to be how things have been handled historically. How optimistic are you now that something's going to get done in time? Uh, much less optimistic than I was three weeks ago, uh, and because the sides aren't talking. I know on the House side, there was not a single meeting with the White House. They did not come over uh, for even one meeting this past week. I think personally that the, they've decided, the president's decided to go off the fiscal cliff, probably blame us for it, which, which would work politically, but I think it's bad for the economy. We need to stay at the table, get the job done. Congressman Kevin Brady, we appreciate your insight as always. Thanks. Happy holidays, sir. Thanks for coming in. Thanks, Chris. Caitlin, over to you. All right. Well, we continue to have widespread fog and some clouds.